Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. Before we get, uh, before we go to Balzano, Italy, just a little bit of news. Uh, first, the schedule, 12 noon, Dr. Michael Fine will be joining us. Uh, he'll be talking about issues related to testing, modeling, and what the numbers are showing relative to the trends here in Rhode Island and across the country. And then at 1 p.m., Governor Raimondo uh, returns with a press briefing uh, we've been pressing that office on releasing modeling information and have filed a second APRA uh, to try and get those, uh, that information released by the governor's administration. Uh, and also, last but not least, not only did Tom Brady leave the New England Patriots, when he moved to Florida, he is now renting the home of a former New York Yankee. If that's not uh, insult to injury, he is living in the house of Derek Jeter, uh, in Florida. Uh, there's, there's a little story on that on Go Local. Let's go to Bolzano, Italy, and our, our, our friend, our, our international uh, correspondent, I feel like, uh, Rebecca Cota de Silva. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us again this week. Thank you so much for having me again. Um, l listen, the numbers across the world, across the United States and Italy continue to be of of such significant healthcare concerns. Uh, Italy has, I believe, passed the 14,000 in the number who have passed. The number of, of reported cases are around 120,000, I think, as of uh, earlier this morning. What's the, you're in Bolzano, a province up in the northern part on the Austrian border. What's been the impact in your community this week? Um, well, now we are, soon it's required the the signature will come soon but everyone started implementing this practice but when we go outside and we're near another person we have to have nose and mouth covered so they're distributing actually neck warmers instead of face masks i think face masks will come but a neck warmer is more con convenient in some ways um so for example you go in a store to buy something you've got to cover um I believe that today our hospital discharged, the hospital in the city of Bolzano discharged more people than took in or yesterday. So that was a really great step. Of course, you know, everything is day by day. Right. Um, but uh, here it's less populated. So social distancing is a bit easier, I think, than in a larger city or um, a place like Milan where it's just, uh, Lombardia with 10 million people in right. such a small space. Um, when did that order come down on mass in the United States? That, that has not been issued as a formal order nationally. It has come out just yesterday as a strong recommendation. Dr. Uh, Anthony Fauci, the leading uh, infectious physician and researcher, has been uh, promoting that and obviously urging people not to use medical masks. Uh, that are critically needed in healthcare facilities. But when did that uh, order come down to use some type of mouth and a nose covering? I think that he's going to sign it today or tomorrow, but it's been implemented since Monday when I went to go, or Tuesday, when I went to the bakery. Um, I actually had a neck warmer anyway, but then they told the next customer, oh, you need to cover. And so I said, oh, can I get distributed one too? Because mine's gonna be too hot in a couple of weeks. So um, they are handing them out everywhere. And it's nice, mine, I got a bright red one. The other woman got a bright yellow one. And I think it's kind of nice that it's bright because you see, hey, here's my protection and then raise it up and there's less enforced. I think the point is also that if it is visible and if people are abiding by it, you can pull it down when you're alone and you're not in a very populated place pull it up when you need to and if it's visible there needs to be less enforcement action because you know that energy could be directed in a more productive productive way people don't want to be sent always policing people to follow rules it's better if people follow the rules and um you uh human resources can be used in in more positive ways of course in italy you would have fashionable neck and mouth covering, right? I mean, only in Italy would there be. It, it was these designed by famous Italian uh, fashion uh, houses, or was this just more uh, rudimentary? 
Well, it is made in EU, which <laughs> it was nice to see that they're at least, um, you know, trying to jumpstart the local economy with with this production. But yeah, they're, um, you know, next week I'll wear mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you what, guys can check it out. Uh, um, you talked about going to the bakery. What is the food supply in the bakery and the market? Uh, how have, have those things stood up? Everything's fine in the village where I live. Um, you know, it, we're not allowed to leave the, it's called a comune, and a comune is everything from a village to a town to a city. It's basically the political unit that you live in. And our political unit, as I said before, is very small. And so you're not supposed to leave it, um, for example, unless you have an, an urgent, an extremely urgent, sorry, I'm translating in my head, an extremely urgent necessity. <laughs> and so, uh, for example, I have a cat that's 18, and if he doesn't get specialty cat food, um, that could be a disaster. And so, you know, people like me are going to have to deal with the issue of if we go down to Bolzano to go buy something that's not available in San Genesio, are we going to have a problem? Are we going to get ticketed? Are we going to have to try to plead not to get ticketed uh, because it's not available? Because in San Genesio, you can get everything. You can get your bread, all of that stuff, but then there are some things where the officer might say, hey, absolute necessity, urgency, and I say, no, no, day-to-day -day necessity, but not available in my town. Ah, but you can buy cat food in the store. So that's one of the things that's really difficult, I think, for everyone living in a small place where you've got enforcement saying absolute necessity to leave, and then you say, no, you know, day-to-day -day things that are not available. Ah, but what is not available, right? Uh, um, how much is, is a it ticket if there is an enforcement action? Oh, I believe the minimum is 400 euro. Oh, significant. Yeah. 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 And not... I, I think that, no, it's, it's big. And uh, that's for someone leaving lockdown. If you're leaving quarantine, it's criminal because you've been diagnosed right. or you've had a fever for a certain amount of days. But if you're leaving lockdown, you, you, yeah, you face a big ticket. I think that most people, if they're told to turn around and go home, are going to do that and not get the ticket. Um, but it's, again, it's something that you don't get to choose if you get a ticket. You get lucky if someone says go home and you say, okay, <laughs> I'm going home on the next bus or whatever. Uh, last week you discussed that your daughter had some dental issues. Uh, before we came on, you gave us an update. Um, you, you were able to find a dentist who uh, was operational and, and could take care of this issue. Fill us in on that. Yeah, so um, it's a dental emergency because she has a, um, you know, she's unable to bite and put pressure under that tooth. Um, but again, it's one of those things that as I'm traveling with her to get to the dentist, I'm going to have to convince every single person that checks me that it actually is a dental emergency. And it could be that I get a ticket and then have to go in with my receipt and a declaration from the dentist and, and all of that. It's just one of those things that as a parent, I'm going to do it. Um, but there might be a lot of resistance along the way. Um, talk about, that's good news. Talk about distance learning. Is that continuing to go well? Yes, yes. The distance learning is going well. Um, we're actually going to get a break from it on April 9th. Um, it'll be Easter break, and they're going to take the Easter break. All the days that we're doing distance learning are counting. So uh, she'll get a break from that, which she's really going to appreciate. But, uh, you know, I think one thing that's nice about distance learning is it is helping kids who are not necessarily always the best classroom learners uh, show that, Yes, they've got stuff too, just it may take a little longer or um, uh, or they may just need a quiet space. Not everybody works well in groups and um, so so far she's she's loving it. Um, yesterday, the governor of Rhode Island in Q and A with kids 
from around the state designated that the Easter Bunny was an essential worker and needed to go to work over Easter Sunday. It, will the Easter Bunny get that same disposition in Italy and be able to deliver candy, jelly beans, peeps, those important uh, nutritious uh, staples for Easter? Well, I think that the Tooth Fairy is going to keep the Easter Bunny far away from my house. <laughs> so you've got, you've but, got um, dueling, you have dueling Tooth Fairy and Easter Bunny. Yes. I, I don't believe the Tooth Fairy is letting the Easter Bunny get anywhere close, but we'll see how that works out. I don't know how a peep could cause a problem, especially a non-stale peep, but... <laughs> Uh, we'll leave that to her mother. Um, what's been the biggest challenge yeah. now that this go has gone on for a number of weeks? What, what, is, what has been the biggest challenge for you there in this small town in, in northern Italy? Yeah, I think the biggest, some of the biggest issues are that the measures are national. They're nationwide. And the reason that we're not allowed to go from one town to another, the reason that we were all told is because people were basically going from Milan to the south of Italy, which has less medical infrastructure. So because people might go from Milan to south of Italy, I can't go down to the city that I rely on for a lot of things. Um, and that's, you know, in a way it's prudent because we're not aware of just how fast and this is spreading. So it's good that I'm not on public transportation all the time. But I do think that the the severity of the measures um, in terms of like, you literally can't leave the town unless you have an urgent, um, pressing urgency. When a lot of people live in places that are 500, 600 people. And that for me has been the most difficult part. Uh, they, in this province here, I, yeah, I think it's the province. I'm not sure exactly which political unit, but um, we're autonomous here. So what we do is we receive the order and they're saying, okay, now that we've got this order about the neck warmers to protect, or, you know, basically the face mask order, um, we're going to see how it goes if people are allowed to go for longer walks. That's been a, a suggestion um, because it's important, as I said the very first time, it's important that people maintain their health because when we do go outside again, this virus might still be circulating and we don't want to be weakened by quarantine. You know, we don't want to all go in, all come out a little bit weaker, especially people with a risk for diabetes or a risk for hypertension. Sitting on the couch all day just isn't good for that. And those are two pre-existing conditions that are so dangerous for coronavirus. So... It's one of those things where it looks like we might get um, some trust, and that will be very nice. Um, what's been the, the most, leave on a good note, what's been the most pleasant surprise about this entire experience? Um, you know, to, I, I personally was actually kind of on a lockdown myself because I broke my elbow really horribly in November of 2018. So I knew I could do it. But to see my daughter go from seeing her friends every day, she loves her teachers. She just loves her teachers. To see her go through this with a, a certain amount of grace at 10 years old is, is really nice. And it's also really nice to know that, um, that we all are looking out for each other here. As, as tough as the measures may be, you know, as bored as I may be at home, I'm not in the hospital on a ventilator right now. Right. So I think that having that bigger picture in mind and just seeing that people can come together and that children can handle this with grace is a very nice thing. Uh, thank you so much once again for joining us. I think it gives a much more First of all, Italy is further ahead. It gives some uh, perspective to folks in Rhode Island. Secondly, it gives a much more global perspective, but also shortens the distance that we all, not only in, in your area, are all in it together, or all of us in Rhode Island in it together, but really the whole globe is dealing with this health and economic crisis together. We hope you will join yes. us again next Friday. Uh, this, I think, has had tremendous value to folks here. Uh, thanks, everybody. Just want to give a quick programming note. 
12 noon, uh, Dr. Michael Fine will be back, and at 1 o'clock, the governor's press conference. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today, and thank you to Rebecca Coto da Silva for Skyping in from Bolzano, Italy. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.